since you've got a main training session still doing, but have you got any clarity on who you can and can't play? Uh, no, not at this stage, unfortunately. Um, but the signs are positive on all, all three of the guys. Uh, leave a crouch and bet, so we'll get through training this morning and um, assess them from there. So what, what is the status of bets? The status? Oh, well, he's, uh, he's returned uh, post-operation. He's returned to start doing some running over the weekend, and we're just building him up this week. Did he see his surgeon? I believe he did. Yeah, I believe he did. And I haven't caught up actually in terms of exactly what it said. It's going to be more how he, he clinically presents now and, and how he's able to go in terms of training. Is Lever the same? No, nah, Lever's fine. Lever should be fine. Crouch is safe to play as well? So should be, yeah. Do you have any worries, Ken? Yeah, whether they all play? <laughs> no, not, not from the pros, but the They've got plenty of worries. No, no not from an injury wise. No, we haven't. No, obviously, um, Wingard's, Wingard's still unavailable. and. Um, you know, Broadbent's a bit a bit scratchy still at the moment, so he's coming off that ankle. So we'll wait and see what that looks like. But we're pretty healthy, to be honest. Can, can you feel tested when it's been now four showdowns in a row that Adelaide's been able to win and tested you to the limit? No, no, I don't, I don't worry about the four in a row. I mean, I don't really care. I, I would have much rather won them, but I, I really care about this week, and that's that's the facts. You know, every every stat's there to be broken at some point, or or runs that going to be broke. I hadn't beaten Sydney in this year for seven or eight years. We hadn't won a close game for two years until last week. You know, all those stats, they are there. You can't deny them. Eventually, it'll get broken. So, so what do you have to do to break it? What do you think you've been falling short on? Oh, we've got to play our absolute best, playing best side in the competition. They sit on top of the ladder for a reason. You know, we played them a long time ago now this year, but it was a really close game. It went right to the wire, and, you know, they broke away from us in the last couple of minutes. We know we can compete with them. We know we can beat them. It's just a matter of we have to do it on Sunday for four quarters. So one of the issues is Betts becomes a showdown specialist. Have you thought through how you deal with that again? Yeah, we do our absolute best as a team to, to control their, their scoring ability, not just Betts. You know, they're a great scoring team. They're, they sit on top with uh, the highest percentage. They've got all the things going on in their front end that's difficult and have been for every side, not just for us. Ken, coming into a game against the top side of the comp, could you have had a better win last week to prepare you for that game? No, it was a, it was a really good win as far as, um, you know, emotionally it helps. I think it gets us over a, a couple of those little hurdles that we talk about. But, you know, it was a game that we, we, look, we, nearly, we nearly blew at the end and, uh, you know, to come away and get a pretty special victory, they do help and they do build some momentum. As, as I said that straight after the game, I, I believe that probably won't count for much when the, when the game starts on Sunday, but for the boys, it's a really confident week leading through this week. John, how are you dealing with your game? It's a game of two extremes where it's very poor and very good, so how do you deal with it? From last weekend? Yeah, yeah look, it was, a, it was a, a different game, certainly a very different game to ones we played this year, and you know, in review, you know, we, were, we were disappointed in our, uh, our effort around the contested stuff, which <coughs> has been a great strength of ours this, this year, and uh, we let ourselves down in that space last week, and we know this week against, you know, against Port, um, another really good, strong contested side, we need to, need to lift our game in that space. But then the fight back and the, you know, we grabbed two points at the end was, uh, was testament to the players' resolve and ability to just hang in there and find a way to give themselves that opportunity. So it was sort of a, a bittersweet two points um, because at half-time we probably lost two, and by the end of it we'd, we'd won two. So um, that's probably how we reflected on it. Bittersweet, does the sweet also become you can put that first half before the players at this time of the year and give them a real strong reminder that the things you've emphasised, contested footing yeah. and so forth? Well, that's, that's, so. that's what the game gives you every week. Every week, you, as I've said all, all along, you, you learn something every week. And you know, disappointing we had to learn on the weekend that that sort of number contested-wise is going to give us some problems and, and give the opportunity to the opposition, which it did. So, um, but yeah, certainly we reflect on that and say that's not going to get it done, and, and certainly that's not going to get it done on the, on Sunday against Port. What sort of how they respond? How they respond on the shutdowns are always red hot to start. How they respond to begin the game? We'll find out. You do anything during the week to? I mean, ah, we're, we're we're trying today. You know, it's a, it's a combination of things. It's you know. Um, you know, I think it's probably in that sort of number suggests it's probably more mentality than anything else. So that's that's something we you know, will address and something they need to, to make sure they bring on on Sunday. Can you jump on that, Ken? No, you expect a, you expect a, from one game to the next that there is there's totally different games. You just don't know what's going to happen. I mean, Don said it was a it was a, it was a big number in the, in that gap, and it's an unusual number to happen to any side. So you don't expect that to happen again. But we, we would expect it will be a fairly strong contested game of football on Sunday. You know, it's the unusual happened twice in two weeks for you, though. <laughs> yeah, I'd take it. Don't worry, I'll take it sitting here. But uh, we're not expecting We know how hard we're going to have to work. Does Collingwood give you some things to think about, particularly about applying speed to the way Adelaide play? Yeah, well, I think um, a bit like probably Adelaide felt, I think. In the first half, it, there seemed to be some things that looked pretty exciting for an opposition team. In the second half, there was some really scary stuff. 
you see a side that's down by 50 points, be able to get back and you go, wow, you know what's coming and uh, you expect the best, I think, and that's the crucial part for us. And, you know, defensively this year, we've been incredibly strong. Um, we're going to get tested to the max this week. So what sort of showdown do you want? Do you want one that's open and you use your speed with your fast players or do you yeah. want to do that defence first mentality? Yeah. We want to play the way we've played all year. There's no doubt about that. And you know, obviously, that's based around for us. It has been based around our, our ability to compete and our ability to defend the ground pretty well. So hopefully, we can do that again on the weekend. But you know, we, we still have to score. We're going to have to score strongly against a high scoring team. Don, the Crows have been quite impressive in wet weather this year. If it's to rain on the weekend, do you think that would be beneficial for you guys? Oh, hard to say. I mean, Port played in the, the wet on, on Saturday night. I mean, now our form in the wet's been pretty good. Um, and that's more about adapting to the conditions. I think that's probably what we've done well the, the two or three times we've played in the wet. So if it's wet again Sunday, we'll, we'll adapt to that and, and get ready for what will be a, you know, generally in the wet, it's a more contested game and um, that premium goes up. Do you practice for a slog like that? Wet and wet, do you practice for a slog like that? Oh, it depends. We're we'll, we'll going to run this morning. I don't know what's going to happen, whether it's going to rain this morning. If it, you, know, you get enough looks at it throughout the, the winter months to, uh, to get a feel for you know, the ball handling side of things, but um, it's kind of hard to purely replicate the same conditions. Don, do you have to deal with anything extra this week with you hear of your players going to visit other clubs and continue contract talks revolving around no. the government leader? No, I, and I don't really want to talk about the, the contract stuff. We've got, we got a massive game this, this Sunday. Um, my focus is on that. But your fans are really edgy about it, so they want to hear from you as to where this stands at the moment. Well, as I said, I'm not in a position to want to talk about that today. You know, that'll take its, uh, take its due course. Does it get frustrating though, ahead of a big showdown week to have these conversations bubbling up in the media with different reports about? Well, we, I can't, again, I can't control that. Um, what we control is what we can produce against Port on Sunday, and that's you know, basically our focus now. We've got a big game this week leading into a final series, and you know, we've got a, a big couple of months coming up, and uh, that's where my focus is at. Can you turn the build up? What's that? Can you turn the build up to this one? Normally, the fever pitch, this one feels a bit more No animosity, you've got to have a chat in the handshake before. We want oh, a bit look, of I think Mayweather it. McGregor. What's that? We want a bit of Mayweather McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, no, I'm not a good fighter. No, okay. Does it feel like there's any extra spice to it given we're only, you know, three or four weeks in the finals? Because it does a lot to you, so it does seem pretty low key this week. Oh, again, I, we, we, we don't, I don't control the build-up. I don't know if King controls the build-up. I mean, internally, our guys are, are getting ready for that, and it's Thursday, so you know, by Sunday, I'm pretty confident we're ready to go. Maybe so, we're are you envious when you see? Other clubs around the country, like Collingwood and Carlton, West Coast and Fremantle, can get a major sponsor for their derby, have major events around their derby. And we've seen to fall and flatten out three years in a row. And I don't know. It's not my job to worry about. I don't. I don't get involved with it. I, uh, I worry about what I do with the players and training and um, how we perform and prepare for for Sunday. I don't. I don't worry about the external seems bit, stuff. Seems that we're falling short, though, don't we? That we, we talk about a big build-up to the showdown, but then we short compared to other derbies around the country. Yeah. Don, you've maybe experienced the derby. So yeah, well. I know. I know in Perth, I think there's a, a brewing company that sponsors that. I, don't, I didn't. I wasn't aware necessarily that there wasn't a sponsor here or who's, who drives that. Um, as I said, I'm big with Ken. We, we focus on what we can control and that's getting ready to play. Ken, there were some reports last week that the club had conversations with Tom Rockley recently. Is that something that you can shed a bit of light on for us? <laughs> Um, contracts, a great time of the year, isn't it? There's conversations. Look, what gets reported, what's actually happening, what doesn't. You know, we don't get involved with it. Particularly as coaches, we don't get involved this time of the year. We have got so much to do right now that that stuff is so far away from my mind that I wouldn't, I couldn't give you any time on it at all to say that I've spoken to Tom Rockliffe. I can tell you that hasn't happened. Ken, from the last show, Dan, and particularly from when the Western Bulldogs played Adelaide, there's a lesson about if you don't tag slow, it can bite you. Do you want to put a heavy tag on it? No, look, when we've played against Adelaide in the past, we've always tried to, you know, restrict their most dangerous players as best we possibly can, whether that be, be that Rory, be that Eddie, you know, be that Laird or be that Smith down the other end, you know, the players who obviously stand out and, and have um, impacts on game. They're the players we're always looking towards trying to slow, you know, whether we can do that to any of those players on the weekend. And if we do do it well, we'll go a long way towards winning. So there's a difference between just doing a one-on-one matchup and a heavy tag, which one do you want to lean to? Oh no, we want to make sure we get the game on our terms and as best we possibly can. If that means we will, if we need to play someone closely on something, we would do that. John, on the other side of that, there were questions about the midfield for the Crows. Tex yesterday said he's really proud of how they've responded to all those questions. How have you seen their evolution? Oh, I think it's been, been one of the 
probably the strengths of our side throughout the year is the, the ability, I know at the start of the year, a lot of questions around our midfield and their capacity and so the growth of some of the individuals in there, and I won't go through them one by one, but some of their growth and some of the, the way they've actually developed their game this year has been really, really pleasing. Um, and again, we get another great test. Now, we let our guard down a bit last weekend, so you know, they're keen to, to respond from that. Last week, we emphasised that slowing questions on going away. Which which slowing questions? Did he tag him out of a game? Well, he didn't have his best day last week, um, and that happened.